Verse 9, And now I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious unto us. This has been by your, by your means. Will he regard your person, says the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Now here's where this is interesting. Because verse 11, you could say, is entirely prophetic about a future time. But might I submit to, to you that who we are, even right now, even today, as we sing, we praise God, that is what produces the fruit of the gospel that we're seeking that the world would have. If only the world would see you, Father, might I add, through us. See, if we're going to be lukewarm about our response to the Word of God, or we're going to be lukewarm about even our praises unto God. I mean, those are quite the convicting words in that last, last song. It's, it's your breath in our lungs. The reason that I literally live is because of you. Because look at where verse 11, see, I think if you don't understand that God is rebuking them for what's lackluster in the nation of Israel, because he's saying this is the fruit that should be coming forth out of you. Because verse 11 says, for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among, not Israel, among the Gentiles. And every place incense shall be offered unto my name, if your offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, says the Lord of hosts. They're being prepared for this. And the nation of Israel was being prepared for that. But I think what should be sobering to us is how much of the nation of Israel did not end up following Jesus. If they had prepared their heart in previous generations, hopefully we would have had a greater fruit in the nation of Israel going, there goes the Lord. He came. He's here. Let's rejoice. Let's join him in his mission. Instead, they were like, I don't think you're him. Because you're telling us to do things that we haven't done for generations, so why are we going to start now? Okay. Verse 12 but you have profaned it, in that you say, the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. You said, behold, what a weariness it is. It is it. I, I inverted it. But that's kind of the way it sounds like. Do, I, do we really have to do this today? And you, all, you said also, behold, uh, excuse me, I'm reading it again. Ignore that. And you have snuffed at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick, thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, says the Lord? Accursed be the deceiver, which has in his flock a male and vowed and sacrificed unto the Lord, a corrupt thing. For I am, great, I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. And I'm not, I'm not going to read much further, but I just want to read to verse 2. And now, O you priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I will curse them. Yeah, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Now, I'm not saying that we want to be cursed, but let's be aware of this, that do we serve him out of duty, or do we serve him out of gratefulness? And... and I think we have to be con conv conv convinced of one thing, which is that we can't pray in a nebulous spiritual way that God would get the world and get the heathen and expect him to do it independently of us. Or maybe we're praying for somebody else outside this room that they'll do it. Maybe we should be saying, okay, let me digest, let me be convicted by the words that I'm supposed to sing and that I'm supposed to live out so that I can manifest your nature and your character so that the change will come to the heathen.